Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about one of the biggest issues when it comes to weight loss and it's something that most people are only just starting to think about and that is what kind of weight are you actually losing? Because we all know that losing body fat is going to be important for health. It results in things like lower blood pressure, improved insulin sensitivity, more energy. But what often doesn't find its way into the conversation is that the kind of weight that you lose matters. When you're losing weight, you don't just lose fat. You're also going to lose muscle. And that muscle is important. It matters. It matters for your metabolism. It matters for your long-term health, your long-term weight loss maintenance, and how you also feel on your day-to-day. So today we'll talk about, we're actually gonna include a recent systematic review and meta-analysis that really looked at this subject. Uh, it's one of the more comprehensive ways to actually look at caloric restriction plus resistance training versus simply caloric restriction. And we're gonna talk about how resistance training changes your body composition when you're losing weight. Now let's start with the problem. When you diet, whether it's caloric restriction, meal replacements, whatever mode you use, intermittent fasting, you'll lose weight, yes, but on average, 20 to 30% of what you lose will be from losing lean mass, meaning that that's, comes mostly from that muscle tissue. So muscle tissue is a part of lean mass. And that's no small thing. Muscle isn't just for strength, strength or aesthetics. It's a metabolically active tissue. It helps to regulate glucose. Uh, it contributes to resting energy expenditure and you need muscle to move. So it supports physical functioning and losing it also makes you more likely in a fascinating line of research to gain the weight back. This line of research, which we won't necessarily go into is called collateral fattening. It's when people lose muscle, they overeat to regain the muscle that they have lost. That results in fat overshooting, which results in gaining back the weight that you lost. So the important question is, can we preserve muscle when we're losing weight? Basically, can we lose fat with either not losing muscle or minimize the amount that we're losing? And so that is exactly what this review, which I will link in, which was titled Effects of Resistance Exercise on Body Composition, Muscle Strength, and Cardiometabolic Health During Dietary Weight Loss in People with Overweight and Obesity. That was the name of the article. So this was a systematic review and meta-analysis. Basically, just means they looked at all of the research and then conducted a statistical analysis of all of those studies. There was 25 randomized controlled trials. So basically, they compared people that were caloric restriction versus caloric restriction plus resistance training, they had about 1600 adults in this study who had overweight or obesity, and they were also undergoing diet induced weight loss. So, so like I said, some of these participants just dieted, so they reduced their caloric intake through various methods throughout those studies. And then others did that caloric restriction, but they included resistance training. So lifting weights, things like machines, uh, using free weights, things like that. And so again, what they really did here is they only took the studies that looked at caloric restriction versus caloric restriction plus resistance training. So they wanted to look at the unique effect of resistance training. Okay, so here is the takeaway of this study. Adding resistance training to caloric restriction doesn't necessarily change the amount of weight that people lose. Both groups, the diet alone plus diet versus diet plus resistance training, lost about the same amount of weight. If that's your only measure of success, what you see on the scale, you won't necessarily notice a difference if you include resistance training. Other lines of research show maybe about one pound or, or about half a kilogram difference between people that do resistance training and don't all the other things equated. But when you start to get more granular and look at body composition, so basically, you know, what's happening under the hood, things that you can't get just from the scale, this is when things are getting more interesting. So specifically, people that did resistance training, they had a greater reduction in, in fat mass. This was small but significant. 
and they preserve muscle mass. So that is, again, that's your lean tissue. They preserve muscle mass. It doesn't mean they didn't lose some muscle mass. It's just they preserve more muscle mass than people that are just doing caloric restriction. Uh, and on top of that, this is also the cool thing. They built muscle strength. You can actually lose muscle and also build muscular strength at the same time. So it's the same total amount of weight loss. It's just that the quality, which is something that we harp on all the time, the quality of that weight loss was different. So dieting alone will make you lose fat and muscle. Diet plus resistance training results in more fat lost and a greater preservation of muscle. Now let's get into a little bit more of the nuance of, of this research. Here's where it's gonna get a little bit more interesting. Now, these researchers also looked at the duration of the intervention, and they found that the protective nature of resistance training was only found in studies with shorter durations, five months or less. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, what is resistance training stop working after five months? Um, it's probably not that. What they suspect and what they found in examining all of these studies is that when, when studies go further than that, adherence drops down. So what they found was that adherence to resistance training dropped down. And if you remove the stimuli, of course you're going to end up removing the results. So it's absolutely vital that you continue with strength training if you want to continue to see that muscle retention as you're losing weight. Now, obviously continuing it is super important, but I'd like to make another point and this is something that I've found in, in examining research is that intensity also matters. So you need to make sure that you're lifting progressively uh, heavier weight. So it's not just necessarily about doing the behavior. Uh, the effort has to be there too. So if you're just going through the motions without progression, it is not going to be as effective. So as basically as I've, I've looked through the research, you can see that People that are lifting heavier weights, I found seems to be about 80% or higher, seem to retain more muscle. So the resistance training needs to end up being challenging. So you have to, if we said eight, if we basically said 10 is the most difficult level of exertion, you should probably be working at around an eight out of 10 for difficulty. So again, moving, just moving weights around isn't necessarily going to be enough. The stimulus that you place upon your body is also gonna be really important uh, for muscle retention. Now, if you were to look at these kind of like caveats or what needs to be in place for your resistance training protocol to be optimal for, for muscle retention, here seem to be some of the caveats that I think are gonna be important. So frequency, how many times per week you're doing it, Minimum two, three is probably going to be better for muscle retention. In fact, most studies that look at caloric restriction versus caloric restriction plus resistance training are using a three times per week uh, overall frequency. Intensity next, it, it has to at least be moderate to higher. So uh, basically if you want to preserve muscle with an optimal protocol, you want to be using about an eight out of 10 effort. The next one is volume or overall total training volume. So if you're doing those three times per week within those three times per week, aim for, aim for two to three sets of eight to 12 repetitions of, of each of the exercises that you're doing. Um, I would minimum do six exercises. If you could do a little bit more, something like eight uh, is gonna be beneficial. Supervision, this might also be really important. Now, uh, this is what they found in the research. A lot of research looks at supervised resistance training. So why supervised resistance training? Well, they're going to help to make sure that you are showing up, that you are adherent. Again, that's super important. And they're going to help to make sure that you are progressing in your efforts. So you're progressively going heavier with the amount of weight that you're lifting. And then the last thing is that you probably also want to supplement this with a high protein diet. A high protein diet is gonna be helpful for this too. Now, one thing that can be confusing, uh, people see that their scale weight isn't changing when they're losing weight and they're doing resistance training, they might think, oh, resistance training is slowing my progress. This, this is not happening. Uh, in fact, you might be retaining water if you're just starting to do resistance training, but let me make something really, really clear. There's no mechanism through which resistance training 
is going to result in increases in body fat. The only way that would happen is if you increased your caloric intake. So the, the meta-analysis really just overall made this clear. So total body weight doesn't necessarily differ between people that do resistance training and don't, but fat mass goes down and fat-free mass is preserved in people that are doing resistance training compared to those that are not. So in other words, the quality of weight loss was better. It's healthier, it's more sustainable, more functional, and you won't necessarily even see that right off the bat if you are just looking at the scale. Of course, you might see it in other areas. Your clothes are fitting better even if the scale's staying exactly the same. So those might be some other ways that you can see it. Maybe you're like, my arms are getting uh, more defined. So you might see some things like that. But if you're just relying on the scale with resistance training, that might set you up for a little bit of disappointment. Now, another point that this paper made was, and they looked at some barriers, and in one point was accessibility. So most, like I said, most of the studies had supervised gym-based programs, meaning that participants had access to equipment and trainers. Now, in the real world, we know that that is not always going to be realistic. So the challenge now is, is making resistance training both accessible and effective. So you're going to need some kind of pragmatic, home-based model that teaches people to apply progressive overload with the equipment that they have. And so again, please check out our channel. We have lots of options for you that you can do in your own home. Let's end with the big picture. So let's go ahead and zoom out and come up with a game plan that I'm going to end up laying out in phases. First, diet alone, again, leads to reductions in both fat and muscle mass. Uh, dieting with resistance training shifts that paradigm. You're gonna lose fat and you will preserve muscle. So you, you just want to focus on including that. And one thing that I will add before we go ahead and go into those phases is that this is a nice statement that the authors, it's very clear. They say the addition of resistance training to dietary restriction enhances the beneficial effects of weight loss, attenuates loss of lean mass, increases fat mass loss, and improves muscle strength. So now let's tie a bow on it and go into the phases of what I would recommend that everyone do. All right, so in your first phase, don't worry about a perfect routine. I just want you to worry about getting started. So start with some beginner-friendly routines, check out my channel. Focus on your technique first. In fact, I wouldn't even encourage anyone to add load on top of their resistance training routine until they get their technique down. Just again, feel free to start out with light weights to get, their, get, them, get through the motions. Next is gonna be phase two. Start increasing the load. Give it about a six out of 10 effort. Do this once your technique is down. Phase three, this is when we're gonna add volume and effort. This is when we're gonna try to get into that optimal routine. Aim to strength training three times per week with an effort of eight out of 10 while gradually increasing the load. So something, if I lifted this and initially it was an eight out of 10, if I keep lifting it, hopefully it becomes a seven out of 10, good signal to increase the amount of weight that you're lifting. Now, as you're going through this process, you'll make that this decision. Do I wanna keep training at home? If yes, you're going to want to probably get more weights, get heavier weights, try to get things where you can learn more technically complex exercises such that you can load them up. Or if you feel ready for it, go ahead and look into getting access to a gym. And of course, continue to make this a part of your ongoing routine.